Hi, my name is Joy Amaguchi and I'm the Public Programs Coordinator at the Japanese American National Museum. On behalf of JANA, I want to thank you for tuning in to today's Artist Talk, presented by Taiji Terasaki Studios, in conjunction with Transcendence Heroes at Borders, an exhibition that opened up at JANA in early 2020. Please note that the views expressed within this video may not necessarily reflect the views of JANA. Thank you, and thank you for watching today. I'm here with the Robbie Canal. We recently lost, you know, the Honorable Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and she was called the Notorious RBG. I think we should call you the Notorious Robbie Canal. And uh, you've been notorious for 30 years, starting with your street art. That's so sweet of you to say. Oh my gosh. So you do it all the time to everybody else. <laughs> I tried, <laughs> tried to get you back on that one. When you first started, how popular was street art? Because you were, you know, as I understand, you were one of the forerunners of this all. And in fact, how would you define street art? I think graffiti was bubbling up from the hood for quite a while and, and righteously and rightly so, because the young people who were tagging felt completely invisible to the dominant power structure and their health, welfare, and education, which is what government's job is, was not being taken care of at all. And also they were marking their turf, which was the only thing they had. So they would be defending that. And there's a little bit of hostility to the dominant power structure. And so that you know, had been going on and was certainly on the rise. In terms of uh, specific street art addressing social and political issues, that's another story. Graffiti is inherently political, and as far as I'm concerned, everything is political in one, w one way or another. It took until about 2000, uh, like after the 2000 election, Hip Hop Nation and graffiti and street art and Skate Nation kind of got hip to the fact that governmental party politics really was affecting their lives with the stolen 2000 election. Graffiti artists and street artists understand stealing and they don't like it. That caused a little bit of a turn. I've been doing this since 1986, but I'm an, an OG, an old guy. I was probably one of the very few street artists who was addressing political issues directly, but mm -hmm. that's changed a lot. Mm -hmm. And now, with an adversary like Trump, it's exploding. Right. And I come from the art world. I'm street enough, but, you know, my background is art school and the art world. Some of the most famous artists in L.A. and around the country, actually, you know, who are famous for their art and make great art, but not necessarily about politics, have come around to addressing that subject because of the dire circumstances Trump and his minions have put the country and the world in. So it's really amazing how much fantastic street art has been addressing these issues these days. Mm -hmm. Understandably so, but still, mm -hmm. power to the people. Yes, but uh, you paved the way for sure. I'm seeing a lot of murals out there too, but sometimes I'm kind of disappointed yeah. that they're not very political. They're just, you know, like uh, more pretty. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, they're urban. We need urban beautification too. And I used to <laughs> joke that uh, my art was actually just an urban beautification program <laughs> for, <laughs> for uh, major cities around the country as we went around on our non scheduled total loss. Uh, garage band street art tours, you know, uh, you know, guys like Mir One, who's like the, this great uh, street art piecer from Echo Park, have made spectacular murals all about cosmology and politics and everything else that he could think of mm. in there. I'll tell you a funny story, like uh, Stash Molesky, who uh, is now an impresario of street art, like he gets major street art crews jobs where they actually get paid around in the early 90s he decided to do a street art show in an art space and he got the con art guys who had a, a the black group of guys who had a, a a shirt company to lend him the second floor of their building in downtown la and he got we got all these crews together to do murals indoors mm. on used billboard vinyl and he was all proud of me. He get me down there and I was going to do a collaboration with Risk. And uh, it was, it was, you know, an exciting. 
Mm -hmm. And he said, we're going to get all kinds of publicity for this. this is going to be fantastic. You know, like these guys are working out. And we went, I went down there with him. And sure, sure enough, under a cloud of spray, you know, these guys and gals were making some really great pieces, big mm -hmm. pieces. Mm -hmm. And and I said, so Stash, uh, did you give these guys any direction at all about subject or anything? Like what subject matter, you know, mm -hmm. they might be addressing? And mm -hmm. he said, no, no, man, I just let them go, man. This is it, freedom, you know, like this is us. And I said, well, you think you're going to get publicity for this? Every single one of those uh, murals was about police brutality. Mm -hmm. Was everyone, that mm -hmm. was their subject, you mm -hmm. know, like a street artist surrounded by cops with pig heads or something or being dragged off in chains, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. I said, I don't think, you know, this is going to go over so well with uh, the media. And of course it didn't, but it was a great show. <laughs> and it was a turning point in uh, our understanding of mm. the subjects that street art can and will address. Mm. And, uh, you know, like there's like a consciousness uh, light bulb went on, like, mm -hmm. oh, we don't have to just, you know, we don't have to just do tags of our names or, uh, you know, like as you said, a pretty picture mm -hmm. uh, with great lettering we can actually address subjects that we care about. That mm -hmm. happened to be the subject mm -hmm. that they cared about. Mm -hmm. um, and understandably so. Uh, Shepard Ferry, uh, who's a buddy of mine, and, mm -hmm. and I are always talking about the difference between street art on the street and that same kind of art going into the gallery system. Mm -hmm. And even if the art's the same, mm -hmm. it's different. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's very right. different. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the reasons is because capitalist cultural economy Mm -hmm. is in play in a gallery system where mm -hmm. these things, you know, are commodities. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the gallery is thinking, that's a business. They're thinking we have to sell this stuff to somebody. Sure. One of the double-edged swords of my work has always been like, oh, Robbie, we love your art about Trump, you know, or whomever mm -hmm. on the street. But I, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I agree with you, but I don't want that guy in my hang in my house. Seriously, you know, like, <laughs> <I'm> not, <laughs> exactly I love that. <laughs> okay, there are those that maybe not, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. oh my god, that's yeah. that's so interesting that's to hear that. With a portrait of RBG or something, you know, like okay, right. And it's my <laughs> wife who convinced me to do uh, in portraits of inspirational women. Uh, oh. You know, an antidote to all the bad guys that I been painting for like <laughs> since 1986 <laughs> and it's you know it was better for her too like okay you can bring that stuff in the house you know like, <laughs> we love rbg aoc uh you, right? you know Greta, michelle um, right right yeah no so, i you you give me so many things to ask about but i noticed that um yeah there's many portraits that you do paint you know favorably and things but they all have this nice gorgeous smooth skin <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure that's in your tactic. That's but, a lot harder for me, man. You know, like, uh, it's one thing to paint people that you don't like, and you can really be cathartic about it. And I throw paint at them, you know, and I go, <laughs> and, and uh, you know, that kind of helps me. Uh, but when I'm trying to do somebody who I love or I really admire, I've been oh. very careful, like, I don't want to screw this up, you know, like, oh. it's like, I would never try to do a portrait of my wife, because it could never be good enough. It could oh. never be good enough, you know, like, and, oh. and uh, that's so uh, sweet. I did RBG, I was very careful, it's more caressive, mm. you know, and uh, <laughs> that hasn't been my style for a long time. <laughs> That's so but funny. it's wonderful, to, that once they're done, I'm happy. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's hard for me to do, it's like, well, I went to art school all my life, yeah. and I learned how to paint the old-fashioned way, which is light, you know, like light to dark, thin to thick, right. you know, build up layers and so forth. It's very boring to paint that way. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. uh, I, and all my heroes were abstract expressionists, the New York abstract expressionists, uh -huh. like Willem de Kooning, Franz Klein, Arshel Gorky. And they were like emoting. And, blah, 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 right, blah. Right. <laughs> and I just kind of transmogrified that uh technique that painterly technique that gloppy technique right. pushed them into all these faces of uh 
corrugated and corrupt people who I dislike. You know, that that's my trick. Right. But right. that doesn't work for people you love. <laughs> <laughs> I, for a while, I was thinking, oh, it's the woman that he's painting so nicely and everything. But I, I've seen, you know, others like Gandhi and um, yeah, Dalai Lama. Yeah, Martin no, Luther. no, no. They're they're very, they're very beautiful. I mean, I I have to I have to admit. I mean, I I really you know a fan of your work and how um, it it gets people to be activists. But I um, in my personal work, <laughs> I, I'm trying to. Um, elevate you know activists and so i kind of I, I appreciate the ones that you do also of the of praising people <laughs> yeah, well it has helped uh, me balance my uh my personality you know like i also do portraits of cats which like up here i heard cat. yeah and uh i love cats and um and dogs Okay. Uh, and and I do them very sincerely as as you know like soulful portraits and that helps me too. Ah, oh, what is what do you think it is about cats that you like so much? I just like the way they go about their lives. Oh. they're they're very independent. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, they're a little transactional in their relationships with humans, but um, they're loving. But they tell you, um, you know, they don't lie. <laughs> You know, like <laughs> like certain people. Okay, you that's know, true. Cats, cats don't lie. They, you, they let you know uh, exactly true. what they want, when they want it. Right. You know, and yeah. how they, and uh, how they they care about you and uh, what the state of your relationship is. I find that very bracing and refreshing. Uh, I would like that to be in my relationships with most humans. Uh, yeah. I can't say the same about politicians. Mm. I, it just makes me think of, we have a cat and last night um, he was pooping in my, in, on my clothes and I, well, I found uh, out that it was the, <laughs> the litter box and we forgot to clean it. <laughs> he was telling me. Yeah, he got a message for you. Exactly, exactly, you're right. Yeah. So, um, you know, I also want to ask you about, you know, the gallery and then for the viewers that don't know, you start with oil painting and then, so you yeah. always, always have those oil paintings and then you must photograph them and make them into posters. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I, I do. A, these days I start in acrylic and then paint over the acrylic in oil and oh. then I have an original... And then I, I have a great photographer, probably the greatest art uh, photographer uh, on the West Coast, Alan Schaefer, uh, right. who's been shooting my work since 1988, although he says 1987. What's the difference? <laughs> you know? uh, um, and, uh, and so, you know, he takes high res digital shots of everything. And then I have a, a tech guy who does the computer graphics mm. uh, to prepare it for uh, an offset litho printer mm. typecraft in Pasadena, which is a very high level typecraft, uh, is mm. a high level print company. And mm. they have these giant Heidelberg presses and we run off thousands of prints of those. And then we also make limited editions of, of prints, uh, mm -hmm. you know, for sale, mm -hmm. um, like a COVID idiot, which is uh, the latest Trump. Trump piece. Um, but we just, you know, we had, I don't know, you must have seen, did you see the show uh, Cabinet of Horrors that uh, yes. we did? Yes, online. Uh, yeah, I'm not in LA, so I have, uh, unfortunately. Where are you? I'm in Hawaii. Where are you? Hawaii. Oh, how nice, how nice for all of us. <laughs> well, uh, uh, my wife we and I have love Hawaii. We still have a lot of cases and we opened up to tourists uh, just the other day. So I, I think I heard like 20,000 people came into the island one day. <laughs> I bet people are ready to go to Hawaii. It's <laughs> That's getting insane. cold around here too, you know. Right, um, it's insane, insane. Uh, Hawaii is a very, very interesting place. Ah, and, uh, you tell me. Yeah. I, lo I love Honolulu and I love it for its contradictions because I'm a New York, I grew up in New York City Mm -hmm. And I love hate New York, and mm -hmm. I lived in L.A. for a long time. I love hate mm -hmm. uh, L.A., but Honolulu has that contradiction in it that is is so profound. You know, like of uh, uh, indigenous people yeah. uh, who've been overrun by Howleys 
and have right. to get along somehow and never get enough respect. And so there's a little bit of an edge there, mm -hmm. but also their, their culture is so undeniably beautiful and mm -hmm. wonderful. And the language, mm -hmm. man, oh my God, it's all oh. about breath. You know, and I just, I just love hearing Hawaiian spoken. I love Hawaiian falsetto music and Ledward mm -hmm. Kaapana. And, um, yeah. It just is transcendental, you know, like, yeah. um, if you get down to the soul of Hawaii, uh, Pele and all that, mm -hmm. what, what, what not? Uh, mm. And of course, the island, the ocean. I'm an, uh, I live um, on the central coast of California in mm -hmm. a little beach town I'm mm. three blocks from the ocean in Morro Bay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a water baby, actually. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's soul, my brother. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you for speaking up for the indigenous here. Um, they, they, they need a lot more respect and we need to learn a lot from them, of course, right? And then there's also the other Pacific Islanders that it's just really sad right now. So, yeah, thank you, you know, for saying that. You know, that's true around the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, the older I get, I mean, I always disliked Mm -hmm. imperialism mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and colonialism right not to mention fucking slavery right but uh, the older i get the angrier i get about it mm -hmm. and the more i'm conscious of mm -hmm. how much it's impacted uh negatively mm -hmm. the world's population you know and um i would like to address that sometime in my work actually oh um, please do yeah. Please do, yeah. please do. <laughs> I'll put that on the list. That's on my list. Okay, we'll we'll invite you to, <laughs> we'll, especially, we'll especially invite you to Hawaii. And <laughs> well, thank you. Get I your research that. going here. But no, oh my God, that would be such an honor um, for you to speak up, speak out about that. You sell your oil paintings also, or yeah, yeah okay, I have you a do gallery that. Enough. Okay, good. On the gallery. But the, the posters is, um, I think it's a great strategy, right? You, you're able to um, offer a price that more the masses can, can purchase. Is that, is that what yeah, you're thinking they're, they're doing that? Expensive, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, that, that's part of it. Like Shepard and I have this in common that, you know, like he always says, you know, like anybody who buys one of your posters is going to be their first art that they buy and it's going to put it up in their dorm or something you know with <laughs> scotch tape or cushions and uh, you want them to be able to afford it you know uh, we give them away on the streets if you encounter us on the streets uh, but uh, you i sell them on my website yeah you know for cheap yes uh, i see and that, i see and that, that's part of uh the idea you know like this is for, for our people, for the people, mm -hmm. it, uh, the gallery sales, you know, it's good in income and I'm grateful for my collectors, people who actually could live with something that I made, mm -hmm. you know, like in their house or in their collection, wherever they put it. But really the, um, the impetus for my work on the, on the streets is uh, to have a vehicle to communicate with uh, regular people with the public about public issues that I care about. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's really my audience is uh, the way I think about it. And you were saying before about like, you know, you might want to have to think about uh, who your audience is, is and, and uh, kind of figure out, you know, how to tailor your expression to be received by your public or your audience. And I'm very conscious of that. Mm -hmm. you know, like I'm not going to put up to, if I do something that's, you know, anti-police brutality, I'm mm -hmm. not going to say fuck the police. I don't think that's exactly the right mm -hmm. tone uh, to reach people. I use humor as mm -hmm. uh, I weaponize it as my, um, you know, vehicle for um, in get tickling people into thinking along with me about, these issues and these people who I think, you know, are dangerous to representative democracy. Right, right. Are, are you extra busy right now with the elections coming up or how, how is that? Busy. Yes, I'm extra busy. In fact, my wife, who's a great uh, graphic designer and, uh, and movie title designer, just put together a catalog of a, a show, Cabinet of Horrors, 
that we did at Track 16 Gallery, 22 of Trump, his cabinet, and his enablers, uh, original paintings in fake gold leaf frames. And mm -hmm. uh, that's on the website now. We just published it. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm way too busy. I'm way too busy. <laughs> There's too many of these people. It's like whack-a-mole, you know. Uh, <laughs> I just just finished today. I, I finished Amy Coney, Coney Barrett, who's going on the Supreme Court. Oh God! Oh wow! Death star for the far right, and and she's she's yeah. gonna like kill yeah. so many uh, very important pieces of legislation uh, for women yeah. and for our health and so forth and so on. Right. It's scary. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm. As I said, you caught me in my, the reason I was, I'm, you know, so rude to you. I'm no. I apologize. Was no. that I was doing the lettering for her. I think her. that's more worthwhile. So <laughs> I don't, but, think so. but it's great to, that you react so quickly. So do you do that often? You hear, oh, I wanted to ask you about that too, but you know, do you, do you many times you, you react in a day's notice and you start painting in the morning and- Yeah, wow. that, that's, that's, part of, that's part of the technique of, of this kind of political and social commentary. You could say that my work is caricature now. Part of it is being a total news junkie. You know, there are two things like, I have the TV on in the studio all the time. It's always on MSNBC or the Dodgers. You know. <laughs> right. uh, Got that. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Oh, and okay. That, that okay. just keeps me company, you know. But uh, yeah, I mean, part of the job, as my job, as I see it, is you know, keeping tabs, keeping mm -hmm. a running tab on all these people and what they're doing. Yeah. And you know, when that, when it hits a certain level. A uh -huh. threshold where I go, <laughs> uh, I, I pick up a brush. There you go. I see. I was going to ask you that actually about your your resources. So, um, do you do you actually look at many different news sources, or you mentioned? Yeah, I do a lot of research. You yeah. do a lot of research. Okay, and it's from the, the the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep, probably. Right? It, it actually is. It actually. <laughs> I, I'm uh, I'm I'm glad to hear that actually yeah that's great. Yeah, you know I have I have my moments when I take my naps. Uh, okay. <laughs> and during that time, oh, well, something could happen, right? <laughs> I have a wife. We have a relationship. You know. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> but, uh, but you're absolutely right. It's funny. Like you know, I I wake up and the news. Mm -hmm. Before I go to sleep every night, the last thing I do is check the Washington Post after midnight for the morning edition and the New York Times and Politico and Axios mm -hmm. uh, just to see if there's anything that I missed or I should, you know, like get ready for and have bad dreams about. Right. <laughs> um, but um, I, I, I want to congratulate you on the catalog, on the book, and your wife did a beautiful job. Oh, yeah, we have a new book too. Yeah. Have and, you seen the book? Yes, I, I. Uh huh. And a actually, I know Shana of um, oh, the LA oh, Weekly. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, she is so funny, and she's so on <laughs> top of it. But uh, she wrote yeah. an introductory um, uh, essay for you, right? On that. Yeah. Yeah, she did. Yes. Yeah, oh, that that's so great of her. Um, I, I. I'm, I'm going to get it, but I haven't been able to read it yet. But she did mention that she um, she talked to you about activism. Was that something that she talked to you about? Because <laughs> it, well, it sounds like a great topic. I think she tried to talk to me about that. <laughs> uh, I'm a little, uh, well, I have, I have this uh, mantra. I have two mantras. One is, apply what you do best to what you care about most. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you are, if the only thing you could do is make art, make art, make it about something you really care about, mm. uh, which is what I do. And it is the only thing I can do. I used to be able to play baseball that kind of mm -hmm. vanished in okay. my thirties. Hopefully, you know, artists uh, look forward to maybe having a late period <laughs> where you know you really let it loose because who the fuck cares you know right. like and i i am pretty much there <laughs> i'm pretty much there <laughs> but, 
but uh, my other uh, little mantra for myself is it's hubris to make art uh, thinking that you can change people's minds about something they really care about. And the thing to do is to make art as your way of expressing yourself in public, uh, your own ideas about those issues mm -hmm. and not like drop bombs on anybody, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of like propaganda or you should think this, mm -hmm. you know, I think that you should think what I think. I don't mm -hmm. dig that at all. I got too much of that in my life. And uh, one of my least favorite words in the English language is should. Like, mm -hmm. Robbie, you should do this. Mm -hmm. Or Tadji, you should do that. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 uh. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's... You that's, could. That's all right. You could. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, I wish you would. <laughs> uh, or maybe think about it you know think about stuff that i'm thinking about um and can we talk or can we um trade art pieces you know <laughs> mm -hmm. you make art about what you think and i make art about what i think and mm -hmm. then let's see maybe a dialogue mm -hmm. that would mm -hmm. be nice yeah no you make a so, statement about um propaganda and how your work is not propaganda um, tries not to be. Tries not to be. Tries not to be. No. Um, yeah. yeah. No. I. I totally respect that. Um, and and well, <laughs> if I could connect these two. So I. I love the the Trump work. You know. And um, I. My favorite is how you combine COVID and idiot together. I, <laughs> I think that's so clever. I mean. Oh my god. So frustrating, right? The whole thing. Um, yeah. I, 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 I'm, I can't help but be a little bit nervous of these next, uh, you know, what will that be the outcome? Because to tell you the truth, um, I started some kind of more activist work, but it was when he was elected. When he took office four years ago, that's when I started doing this. So I kind of, I kind of wonder what will happen, you know, let's think positive when he leaves office, you know, but I'm, I'm sure you will, do you feel like, oh, my source of material is, it's not going to be as exciting? Did you ever think like that? If, if Trump leaves office? I'd be grateful. Okay. I'd be great. Give me okay. a break. <laughs> okay. Give yeah, us no, all. That's, that's true. That's right. And it's that's never so too late to get active, Taji. I mean, whenever you started, that's a great time. <laughs> and then I just um don't stop. just don't stop. <laughs> okay. And then I saw that you um on Twitter, I think I saw you animated um one yeah. of the Yeah, I love that. Is that a new direction you're going or? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Hey. So number one, number one, every two-dimensional figurative artist is jealous of animation. Uh, you know, why can't my art move? <laughs> you know, in my case, can't I just have like a, a pie in the face? You know, like <laughs> do all these Trump things. Now, how about ba ba boom? You know, right. uh, so right. we all, I always like wanted that. And uh, Debbie, my wife, uh -huh. who does uh, like motion graphics for uh, movie titles, the beginnings of movies, has an, an animator. Uh, um, an After Effects guy who uh, lived in Mar Vista in LA, but just moved up here to uh, Arroyo Grande near where we live. Mm -hmm. So, and because the movie business now is not really pumping because of COVID, <laughs> right? You know, he has a little time on his hands, and he's within striking distance for me. <laughs> you know, so that's great. Isn't it? That's great. Yeah. That's that'd be his just is Fred Davis and he's a great he's a great quick animator. Okay. And so we've been collaborating a little bit over this great pizza that we get, uh Palo Mesa pizza uh wood fire uh -huh. in, in uh Grover Beach, right at the and, and so we meet there and we have our pizzas and scheme up a little animation for my stuff. Uh, and I'm very grateful to him. Uh, we've oh done uh, three of them now. They're, oh they're on my Instagram if you guys want to check it out. It's very exciting. It's very rudimentary. I mean, I'm just like, you know, a Luddite 
but and Freddie will only put up with me for a certain amount of time because he's actually got a life. <laughs> uh, but, no. Um, yeah, but they, I'm thrilled to do that. I'm so glad you're interested. They only need to yeah. be, right? A, a short few seconds or whatever. Yeah, no. That's right. Really. That's right. And then you do That's a lot right. of social media. So, I, you know, I yeah. want to tell everybody, please check out his Instagram, his Twitter, and uh, his website. There's, you're always adding to that. And it, it's just That's so right. interesting You're all to welcome. You. Just, and I'll, I'll, I'll answer anything, you know, you, you want to know or you want to, like, uh, yell at me over Twitter or anything. <laughs> that, that's just fine. Okay, <laughs> okay. That's, that, that's great. Well, maybe at that note, on that note, I mean, there's many things I could ask you more, but on that note, um, I want you to get back to your painting and finish that <laughs> one. <laughs> and I expect to see it on uh, Instagram today <laughs> or something. You will. You will. You will. It's a nasty oh, one. Okay. <laughs> great, great. So um, thank you very much for your time. Thank I you. appreciate it. Thank you for all you do. Oh, I thank you. I your thank show you. too. It was fantastic. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And thank you for your participation. But, you know, um, where, what town do you live in in Hawaii? I live in Honolulu. So, okay, so you know Honolulu and Los Osos, California, where I live, are now sister cities. Oh, no kidding. We hey. just that happened. Oh, wow. So um, now that we're sister cities, what, what happens? <laughs> I mean, you're welcome anytime. Okay. We welcome you anytime and please invite me. <laughs> That's what okay. It, it sounds like a deal for sure, for sure. So, um, okay, we'll see you in Hawaii, but, but please take okay. care and keep producing that great art. Thank you. You too, man. Thank, Thank you, you so much. For Thank you so much. Okay. Bye-bye. Aloha. Aloha indeed. <laughs> Mahalo and all that.